We want you to be able to head out into the world. Actually, Mary, do you mind do me a favor and just get in the door for me? Thank you. We want you to be able to head out into the world and not get ripped off and get the most value for money. And so you will frequently see situations like this where you need to make a choice about which is actually going to end up being cheaper. Now we know in general when you see the same item, you know, maybe it's like a, um, a bag of sugar or something like that and you can see two different sizes. In general, which is cheapest? In general, is it the smaller one or the bigger one? Interesting. Okay, now you'll pay less initially for a smaller one, clearly, but usually there's an incentive to buy in, do you know what you call it? Bulk, bulk right? Buy in bulk, right? The more they can sell you, the cheaper they're happier to sell it to you for. Now this is usually the case, but we want to, number one, confirm that, and number two, be able to spot when it's not, because it isn't always. So. We're going to have a go at this particular comparison and there's roughly speaking two ways we could do it. They're kind of two versions of the same thing. So, Merrick, do you want to give us a suggestion what we could do first? Uh, use the money to divide the gram, so you do one gram minus how much. Okay, pause right there. So I want to take Merrick's suggestion, but I don't know if we all caught it. Merrick suggested that we take this money, right, and we divide it by the number of grams that we've got. In this case, that's 45. You might want to get your calculator out for this part because we're going to get some weird numbers here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each of these by 45, okay? So that means I'm going to get some amount of money for one gram, okay? Now, this is a small amount of money. You can divide by 45. So it's going to be pretty small, some number of cents, I'm guessing. Has someone got an answer for me? I'm expecting you're getting 0, 0.0 something. What do you got? Four, lots of sixes? Four, six, six, repeater, and so on, okay? So that's how much it costs for one gram using this bag, okay? And um, we can do the same thing over here. We can take this different amount, $6.50. We're not gonna divide by 45 though. This time we're gonna divide by? 150, because it's a new amount of mass, right? So what are we gonna get for one gram in this case? Okay, so very close, but instead of sixes? We've got threes. Is that okay? Did that match what you got before, Merrick? Um, or were you going to do something different? I, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're happy with that. So we can quickly see which one is actually cheaper. It's the, the bigger one per mass, right? Of course it costs more to get more, but you're actually getting more for your value, okay? Now this way works, it's fine. But there is another way that might actually be, be a bit simpler. Yeah, do you have a question? Go ahead. Would this be easier way or there is another way that's easier than this one? Well, I'm gonna show you the other way and then I'm gonna let you guys tell me which one you think is easier, okay? I kinda, well, let's have a look, okay? Now, what we've done is, uh, this method, by the way, you might wanna jot this down. It's called the unitary method. Let me just write that at the top here for you. The unitary method. Could I get a show of hands? Who's heard that phrase before? I think some of you should have. Unitary method, hands up. A few of you, okay, thank you, hands down. So why do we call it the unitary method? What you're trying to get is the cost of one unit. In this case, it was a gram. It might have been a kilogram or, you know, how many donuts you get. The unit changes depending on what you're buying, okay? There's the unit. There's the unit. Now there's another way to do this. The whole idea was to be able to compare them on the same terms. One gram, one gram. But there's an easier number, and I want you to look carefully. Don't shout it out, but I want you to raise your hand once you see it. There's an easier number that we can get between 45 grams and 150 grams. It's really quite easy to sort of divide. You don't need your calculator at all. Have a think. What do you see, Yang? 15. 15 grams. If I worked out for 15 grams, how do I get from 45 to 15? What do I divide by? Three. I'll divide by three. So that means I should divide this by three as well. You don't need a calculator for this. What's that divided by three? 70 cents. So that's 0 0.7 dollars, 70 cents. Have a look over here. The reason why he only chose 15 is because it's real easy to get 15 out of this as well, right? I'm not going to divide by 150. I'm not going to divide by three. What should I divide by? 10, which again, you can tell me, 65 cents, which confirms what we got before, that this is cheap. Do you see that? 65 cents versus 70. Which did you like better, the blue method or the red one? The red. red. <laughs> the red one, it's nice because you sort of don't have to think as hard. You just like, whatever amount is there, just divide by that. Whatever amount is there, just divide by that. 
But I would like to put a big like thumbs up on the blue method as well because you noticed we all did the calculations very simply. And you know, even though you've got a calculator in your pocket most of the time, it really pays to be able to do something just without thinking. Okay?